Heroes of Tenefer, designed by Pepon Van Loom, published by Broken Mills Games. It's a one to four solo cooperative effort that plays in about 60 minutes. And today we're going to take a quick look at this, but first let's go over a little bit of the game before we hit the mat. Off the success of their first Kickstarter in 2019, Broken Mills bought us Heroes of Tenefer, a simple dungeon crawl in which heroes fight through dungeons to become strong enough to defend their village. The second cursed Kickstarter not only allowed new players to pick up the base game, but also allowed returning players to add to the game, giving them more of what was in the box already. More monsters, more bosses, more characters. The game and expansions are card based in which you dive through up to 10 different dungeons consisting of two rows with five dungeons to explore. Each dungeon has four different monsters randomly dealt from a huge reserve of cards specific for that level. The dungeons start at level 1 and finish at level 5 and the first card is turned up in each dungeon so you know at least what you're going to get into at the start of each fight in each dungeon. Every level has a unique reward for finishing the dungeon that ultimately helps the players in some way. The boss consists of four cards that are randomized and when time runs out you must fight the boss prepared as you are. If you beat all four boss cards, each of which have its own unique power and stats, you win the game. If you fail, you lose and all is hope. All hope is lost for your village. So let's go take a look at this very simple deck builder with a push your luck mechanic and let's go down to the mat. Here's a close up of the basic characters. You can see the bard, the cleric, the thief and the barbarian. These are what we're going to be using today. Welcome to my table. Uh, we're going to continue our discussion on uh, Heroes of Tenefer. As you can see, I have uh, set up the uh, player mat and I have both my players ready to go. I have my barbarian bard and my cleric thief. I have created the decks. Each deck has six basic zero cards and six basic one strength cards along with their character cards. Out here on the board as you can see I have the dungeons all set up. There are two rows of dungeons. Level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4, level 5. Below are the rewards. So when I finish a stack of dungeon of monsters through the dungeon I will get that reward. Now I can do one pass or two passes or three passes but until I clear the dungeon I cannot have that reward sometimes you will not get that reward when I come out of a dungeon on the right you can see the little marker I'm going to tick it up one as long as I don't get defeated by a monster it ticks up one closer to the skull where I will fight the uh, monster I am got it set up for normal level. We're not going to play a full game. I just want to show you some of the mechanics. Simple to set up. Took me about five minutes to set up. The various cards um, here will show us the power for two player games. So I'm just going to bring up, I have two level one dungeons. This first monster is a goblin. It has a power of a three that I have to take out. It has no special ability. You can tell that by the, the card at the top. If I could get it into focus. Let's try that again. There it is. You can see the three. Now I'm using some new equipment today. And my lighting isn't the best. I'm still working on it. But in order to defeat the, the goblin, it is a, of three power. Now the way this game is played basically is I take my deck and I will draw three cards. So losing my Barbarian I draw zero, a one, and a special card. The Barbarian can draw three more cards. Now I only have a one. So in this case normally after this, uh, you draw three cards your choice is either to discard or to play the three. Now because of the Barbarian special skill I can take three more cards. Another zero. Up, oh, I have the Bard skill. 
You may discard the top two cards of your deck to double the power of one of your other cards. I'm not going to do that. That's the second card and then the third card. So as you can see, I've drawn my deck, uh, six cards. I have put trolled two ones. Now I would come over to my next player, which is my cleric thief, and he does the same thing. I will draw a zero, a one, and a one. Now, as you can see, I have defeated the three power goblin. The cleric has. So I'm going to take these cards, put them in my discard along with the top card of the deck into the card. And this is how we deck build. Now we'll take the cards off the table. These will go into the discard. And we will turn over the next card. The next card is another goblin. We will basically do the same thing again. This time we're going to start with the cleric and thief. We have our little indicator actually of which dungeon we are actually in. It's just a little flame. I don't know if you can see that. There it is. So we start again. I'm going to pull the first card. Is a one. Second card is another one. Third card is another one. In this case, we've defeated the goblin. Again, that goes in there. Usually you don't. Now we have used up all, basically most of the um, ones in this deck. In fact, there's only six. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So really, it's pretty chancy to do the next one. But we have almost a full deck here of the Bulbarian. This is a push your luck game. So we're going to pull up the next card. And it is a Another, a gargoyle. The gargoyle has four. This is not good news for us because there's basically only about three in here and one in here. So, But there are these special cards for the thief that allow them to shuffle cards back in. So let's just take a look and see what happens. So we're going to pull the first card, which is a zero. Not good. A one, not and one. So we have a two. There are not two cards in this deck. So, and we, we're not going to get the two. So the best we can do is come over here and hope that we can trigger something interesting. So we're going to pull a one, which is good. A zero. And we have the cleric ability. Now this doesn't really help us. The cleric ability allows another player to shuffle up to two cards back into his deck. Unfortunately, we don't have anything of interest and we can't get at it for this deck. And I don't think there's anything in here that we that it's going to be useful. But in this case, what we could do, because we knew the thief card didn't come up if we were playing it, we might just discard that and say, we'll go one, two, three. These cards are just going to get discarded, uh, but just get shuffled into the deck for the next round. So the Thief ability lets you basically take, uh, you may discard a card from your hand, which we had two cards left, if you would know, dungeon, and then and take a dungeon card from the reserve. So what basically that means is that I can take a level one card from the reserve, which is off to my side, take the top card, and place it into my deck. Unfortunately, we did not, we lost on this uh, Gargoyle, which means we were going to tick up two times. And that's as simple as the play gets. It's basically, you repeat this pattern again and again and again and again until the game is over. So just to get to the reward, we would basically shuffle up our in between the decks, in between the turns, we would shuffle up the cards again. We do the same thing with the new deck. Since he went for the third guy, he went first. The cleric is going to go first. He pulls a one. He pulls a zero. He pulls his cleric skill. Two cards of your choice back into the deck. Nah, it doesn't work. 
I would say we're going to discard that and go a 1, a 0, a 0. We're going to discard that. Oh, we have a 1, a 1, and a 1. So that's 3. As you notice, when I put the card into the deck, we are actually playing the upper part of the, uh, the card here. When they're in the dungeon, we are playing for the bottom part, but up here we're playing for the top part. So we have three, we basically have three now, which is good. Then we would come over to here and we turn the first three over, two, three. Uh, the bard skill, the bard allows you to take and double any of the values. That's useless to us. We're going to go one. We only needed one, two, three. Overkill. So we have the three. We're going to put that in our discard. We're going to pick up this guy. And there we go. Now we know we have plenty left. We're going to finish off the dungeon. And it is a rat. Giant rat. This enemy can only be defeated during the last player's turn. So that means basically as a first player on this side, as the barbarian, the cleric has to finish him off. So we're not. Re so two isn't going to kill him even... So we're going to pull out a 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. We are going to discard it. Now, throughout the game, zeros aren't necessarily bad. There are cards and other monsters that turn zeros into plus ones. Also, there are cards that allow zeros to mean something. In other words, in one case, there's a dragon card that gives you a plus seven if you have three zeros in your discard pack. So while you can thin your card, thin your cards, you certainly um, don't always want to get rid of all the zeros. So we're going to pull it one, two, three. Perfect. We're going to keep that. And then we're going to come over here and go one, two, three. We've got more than enough to kill the monster. The monster goes over again into the cleric's hand, who seems to be doing very well with killing monsters. Then once we come out of the dungeon, we're going to tick up again. We're going to look at the reward. So the reward is you may remove one card of your choice from your deck, or you may put one basic card of your choice from your deck into your discard pile, or you may put up the three basic cards of your choice from your deck into your discard pile. What that's really doing is just thinning down your card. So if you really got a good powerful card, like one of those zeros, you can bail three zeros and get that to that powerful card. What next after that? Once we take that reward, that dungeon will be finished. And then what happens is that we basically will move on. Now we can either go to the number two dungeon or we can try to fight the next one, which is an imp. It's, they're not really that much more powerful. If you can see, the imp is really three. So not too bad. has a special power. You can't start the combat. Two basic card zeros from their discard power put back from the deck at the beginning of the beginning of the fight. Since we've taken came out of that, we would come back and just shuffle these back up because we are in between rounds. We've ticked up. Now this card this is going to be very, very nasty at this point because we had a bad start. We already picked up two rounds, three rounds, and that could hurt us at the very end. At the, at the end of the um, game, uh, when we tick up totally all the way up to the skull, we are going to fight the Bog Witch. Now, the Bog Witch has a power of 12 that you have to defeat. And at the end of each combat, shuffle this card into the starting player's deck. When you draw this card, place it from you. If you place it in front of you, and all your cards get minus one power for the rest of this game. There are four cards. Each card has its own attribute, and each card has its own power that you have to defeat. That is the Bog Witch, and she's a nasty one. There are eight in total in the game itself, and that's kind of the rundown here of, of the game. This game is a nice, light filler. The pros of the game is it's easy to set up. It's soloable. The rules are really quite easy, pretty enjoyable to, to the most facts, so that's kind of a neutral. I, I enjoy playing it, but I don't think it's going to be a go-to game because it's just a little too simplistic in terms of a, 
of a crawler, an abstract crawler. I think um, as a co-op, it could be fun, like a beer and pretzel style game where everybody's playing, everybody's helping each other. I don't know how much replayability is from a solo perspective. Uh, I think I would be bored of it uh, if I played it too often. You know, this would be a nice filler. I'm going, I'm going to play it. I got a half an hour, bang, done. So, all in all, I'd say this game is a good a good game to buy. I'm not sure. I got it on a Kickstarter. The retail does not come with all the goodies and the expansions. It's about the same price as the Kickstarter. Uh, I think that um, the Kickstarter does offer you a little bit of value because of the expansion. I'm, assure, I'm sure that it's going to show up in retail eventually, but not just right away. It is worth having the expansion. I haven't looked. I looked at the secondary market. The secondary market, the game is holding its value. So you have that working for you. If you do buy the game and don't like it, you can go to Board Game Geek, put it up for sale. All in all, not a bad game. It's in my collection now. It'll probably stay in my collection, though I will be doing a call probably in next summer, partly because we'll be moving. But for now, it's going to play, going to stay in my um, collection. Hope you enjoyed this little bit of playthrough. Uh, I am trying to improve my equipment as I go along. I'm trying different things. I don't quite have the lighting. The autofocus is a little bit not autofocusing, but this is just getting it done and trying my best. And I hope you enjoy it. As again, uh, I would if you want to hit subscribe, please do hit like. Please hit like. Um, and if you enjoy the if you enjoy it, then I'm going to try to do more of these over the up and coming weeks. I'm on vacation for the next three weeks, so I'm going to try to get a few of these done just to have some fun. Thank you very much.